has own things to worry about. So very brief descriptions. Miguel Costanzo, who was a military engineer, had a slightly lengthier diary, but also not as much detail. It's Crespi, a Franciscan, well-educated, and also very, very attuned to people, to flora and fauna, to animals. He wrote a lot, probably more than he was supposed to. I'm sure his superiors thought, wait a minute, we don't want to go through this whole thing. He did a field draft and a revised draft, so he added even more detail, which is good for us now to read, but what probably wasn't real good for his superiors. On uh, July 30th, uh, which is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, so they often do this kind of thing, right? Have their, their markings. They left what is now North Orange County, where Brea is, speaking of tar, and uh, St. Martha Village taking a due north northward steward course. And they talk about, frequently, Crespi especially, the very fine soil, the better grass, uh, going into hollows with large live oaks and sycamores. Not a surprise, right, given our native landscape here. Uh, coming down to a very uh, wide-reaching, green, exceedingly spacious valley of dark, very level, friable soil, all burnt off by the heathens. Now that's really crucial, because a lot of assumptions made about the native peoples uh, include things like, well, they didn't manage their environment. They just lived off the bounty of the land. It wasn't hard to do. They managed it. You burn the, the soil because you want to generate new material, correct? And also maybe expose animals that are easier to hunt. Uh, going about a league. Now, what is a league? Anywhere from 2.5 to 3 miles, depending on how you uh, look at the systems. We came to the water the scouts had found, another crucial thing. Scouts were sent ahead, uh, often an entire day, obviously to see what was the best route or to utilize existing routes in, in most cases, and also to look at the water resources that were available to them. And they found a very large stream of running water. Now, what they crossed were the Puente Hills from Brea into what they call the San Miguel Valley. And the, the water they found first was called San Jose Creek, which runs basically from the Pomona area into the San Gabriel River. Now from there, Crespi is highly impressed with what he sees, all kinds of very lush, tall plants, a great many very lush grapevines. Los Angeles area was the winemaking center of California for a great many years. Aren't we, aren't we in fact, uh, on this dais underneath the oldest grapevine in Southern California, from which I gather people still hope to distill drinkable wine? Chris, you'll have to tell me about that. As a matter of fact, that's true. We have a grapevine uh, not quite as old as this the homestead, and we've got a demonstration vineyard in our museum that is about five years old. So my colleague who's managing that is looking forward to pressing his, uh, his wine and not sharing it with anybody else. <laughs> so yes, grapevines. Uh, countless rows of Castile bushes. So much of what we thought to be cumin. Now, obviously, they're looking at materials they did not know, and they had to use their own references. That double hundred weights worth could have been gathered in seed and in flower. Talks about swamps. Now, this spot is in a valley, in which everything is flat, dark, very grass-grown soil, and which, which must be at least six leagues in length from east to west. So roughly 15 to 18 miles. With, well, its width north and south was about three leagues, so maybe seven and a half to 10 miles all surrounded by mountains, which on the northern side are very tall and dark with many wrinkles, and being very snow-covered in season, the snow lasting upon them for a long time, indeed months, like this year, right? San Gabriel Mountains. All right, so it goes on to talk about the swamp and water in place, and because of this being very miry, a bridge had to be made across the aforementioned stream. In every way, a very grand, excellent spot for a very large, plenteous mission. Crespi found great mission sites everywhere he went in Southern California. He's going from San Diego North. He's, this is all new to him. This is a great site. Wait a minute. This is a better, wait, well, hold on. This is a great site. The one here he named is in the document, La Puente del Arroyo de la Valle de San Miguel, the bridge of the stream of the St. Michael Valley. Now, if you're a, a Spanish speaker now, you would say, El Puente. These are Catalonians from the 18th century, so there's a different way of speaking Spanish. It is La Puente in the Crespi diary. One of the few place names Crespi gave that actually stuck. Uh, most of them were saints' names that he didn't hold for uh, whatever reason. A wingna, that's what he was talking about. A wingna village, which is the native village in that area, absolutely, was, was a, a crucial thing. So again, like, like Andy and Matt indicated, where they're going, are, they're going to go where other human beings had been for time immemorial and they're using the same kinds of resources and all that sort of thing. Now, on July 31st, they set out from this bridge and went westward. 
And Crespi says we were struck with wonder at seeing such lushness upon all sides, extremely lush rose bushes. He said, from horseback, I plucked more than four dozen of them that came into my hands. It sounds like a commercial, some product, where someone's riding on a horse and plucking flowers from the nearby landscape. The grapevines are countless in number, very lush. And we came to woods so dense, it was necessary for the soldiers to clear a way through on account of the thicket of various sorts of trees, willows, grapevines. If they'd only asked the people at Avigna, how do we get through here? They would have told them, hey, you don't have to cut your way through. You can go around uh, this way, probably. A vast number of antelopes on this plain. Well, the Antelope Valley is way out there, but there were antelopes down on the, uh, the ocean plains as well. And a great many hares. The heathens, he said, at the Earthquake River. Where's that? They got to the Santa Ana River several years before that, and they experienced a major earthquake, uh, estimated 6.8 to 6.9. So we just had one about that big right up in the desert area. So it was so severe, even the natives were pretty shocked at it. And they were used to this for, for being there as long as they were, according to the Spanish description of that. So they go along a westward course. Eventually, uh, after about four hours, and about three leagues and a half, they stop. And he says, Crespi, about a half a league distant from the low range running along the south side, the Puente Hills, there's a gap through which this valley connects with the long, spacious plain we had left behind. That gap is the Whittier Narrows, by the way. We set up close to a, a little channel of very fresh, pure water running through a low spot in the landscape there. And what he says is what provides the crowning excellence to this spot is that at the opening in the above mentioned range toward the south, out of a very large pool between some knolls, there begins to rise a good sized river. On its bed, it has trees, cottonwoods, willows, and other sorts. And he called it the a river of the big San Miguel Plain. We would know that as the Rio Hondo channel of the San Gabriel River today, more or less. These rivers change course because of frequent flooding obviously. And this is a key thing. And he calls it the crowning excellence of this spot is that it's in this gap here. The soldiers went off and went antelope hunting. And we killed one. Very well flavored meat, well relished by everybody. I don't know if the natives got a chance to partake in that uh, part, a meal there. Two sites were uh, located for the mission, either here at the river, meaning the Rio Hondo, or at the bridge, once we set out. But the finer spot is the bridge of the stream with its valley as described before. And that's not what happened. The, the mission San Gabriel should have been at La Puente, but they established it in the Whittier Narrows. And uh, Junipero Center, by the way, was supposed to be in this expedition, chose to stay behind in San Diego because a uh, supply ship that was brought up from Baja to help provision this group was lost at sea. That's not good. And then uh, others that were part of this group got sick, and it was a hospital basically set up in San Diego, and Serra stayed behind. Two years later, he sent two priests to go up and found the San Gabriel Mission in the Whittier Narrows. And so what is known as La Mission Vieja, again, a site that the natives occupied for thousands and thousands of years ago. Before that, he came to the first San Gabriel Mission location. Now, either it got flooded out or there was not enough water, and they had to move to its current location, a little bit higher ground out there. Uh, one thing I should mention about the San Gabriel River, if I may also, is that the river did not flow down from the mountains in a smooth fashion as the Santa Ana River would have done, or the Los Angeles River had done, because of all the debris that gathered at the mouth of the canyon, granite and uh, sand and rocks and all that sort of thing, the water went underground for several miles. And then, according to some geologists I've talked to, there's probably a fault line that ran through there. When the water hit that, it was drawn up in a very violent way. In fact, they talk about it in the expedition as the water surging out of the ground. Uh, really amazing to behold, if you could see that at that time. August 1st, the group laid by for a day. They actually spent a day not traveling. And that's probably because of the beauty of the landscape that they were in. And again, the, the natives knew that for uh, being here as long as they were. And they felt another strong earthquake. Lots of aftershocks going on during that. We have sighted a few heathens far off, Crespi says. They were called out to, but never showed themselves nearby. Yesterday afternoon, however, we saw about three smokes in separate places. Fires that were set. When Cabrillo came through in 1542, he noticed uh, fires that had been set, and that's why they called the Bay of Smokes, basically where the harbor uh, uh, port of Los Angeles is today. Now finally, August 2nd, so we get into the day that we're all, all here for. They set out uh, from this spot a half a league 
before where the San Miguel River rises out of the ground here, went about a league and a half and came to a little low range that we had had in view in this direction, and here left the valley. So we're talking about right uh, northeast of here, coming into this area. I'm going about three hours, about three leagues, so about two and a half to four miles an hour. Not very quick, right? We came to the water found by the scouts yesterday, another river with another very green, lush valley, in no wise inferior to the two past ones, meaning San Gabriel and Santa Ana rivers. This river here is a bit smaller than the last ones, its bed being where we cross it about seven yards wide. It is not deep. It flows from north northwest from the quite high mountains lying next by here. So we're talking about in the San Fernando Valley coming into this area. Then there's a dry creek to the northeast with a very large bed. What's that? Arroyo Seco. Yeah, Arroyo Seco, right? With a very large bed closing with the river here. Now that's interesting. When they say closing with the river here, were they at the confluence of those two bodies? Or was Crespi talking about spot where he knew it was a closing because they had been to it. It's not entirely clear. And in fact, his field draft and his revision are slightly different that way. The beds of both are well lined with large trees, sycamores, willows, cottonwoods, and very large live oaks. We found pine nut cones and a great amount of nutshells. This river flows on down nearly at ground level through a very green, lush, wide-reaching valley of level soil, some leagues in extent from north to south. And he goes on about brambles and grapevines and more roses and all of that. So that really it can be said to be a most beautiful garden. Good, better than good, and grand, though the previous places have been. To my mind, this spot can be given the preference in everything, in soil, water, and trees, for the purpose of becoming in time a very large, plenteous mission of Our Lady of the Angels, of La Porciuncula because of this day on which we have come to it being, in our seraphic order, the one for winning that well-known indulgence. And so we have pro proclaimed the river and valley of Nuestra Señora de los Ángeles de la Porciocula, Our Lady of the Angels of the Porciocula. So he, he talks about the naming, obviously, here. Uh, one, one thing I want to mention, too, about this is that he is in a location that, Alan Brown was a guy who spent 40 years working on this. He had this, the drafts he had found he had the, and the, uh, the field revisions, and he had done the Spanish transcriptions and the English translations. Really couldn't get it published by a, a regular publisher because it would be too expensive to do four columns of Spanish and English. San Diego State University issued it in 2001 in kind of a library binding, not very fancy. And so Brown indicates the discovery of the LA River, well, discovery, meaning what they found when they got here, <laughs> They have been North Broadway and North Spring Street. So kind of where the downy uh, playground and pool might be. Like you were saying, David, you went up there hoping to. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I woke up this morning down. looking forward to this evening, but nothing but errands and work and nothing in particular to do. So I, I thought to myself, after I got Paul's email the other day, I'm going to go to the Downey Recreation Center pool. <laughs> and I'm going to lie on my back and float and look up at the promontory of Elysian Park, and I'm going to imagine what it must have been like for the Portomeros, and of course for generations upon generations before that, of uh, the Quiche, uh, what it must have been like near that confluence on that spot. And uh, I figured I'd stop there on my way here. And unfortunately, um, they're cleaning the pool today. Uh, some process I never heard of. They are shocking the pool, which may be, I, I gather it's just killing algae and bacteria, but I don't want to be anywhere near a pool that's getting shocked. So, so all I got out of it was this half an anecdote, but if anybody wants to join me at the Downey Recreation Center and Pool, when it reopens, uh, I believe as soon as tomorrow, um, it, without algae or bacteria or electricity, um, it, is, it is a date I mean to keep before terribly long. But 